Hi, I'm Dave Snodgrass, and today on Table Ready Gaming, and I'm excited to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you a way that I've been storing my miniatures. I'm really excited about this system. I think it's the best system I've used. I've been gaming for over the course of about 20 years now, and I've tried everything from shoe boxes to Ziploc bags to uh, shelves to even the battle foam storage containers. Um, and by far, this is my favorite system. Uh, it's really easy, super affordable, and you can build them from home. And the best part is magnets. How do they work? So what we're going to start with is these paper boxes. I'll put a link down in the description for the ones that I ordered um, off Amazon. Super simple to do. Uh, the things I like about this is one, they're very light, they're very shallow, but still deep enough to put standard infantry miniatures in. They come with this great lid. And they can go on the top and it's recessed in here and then that just clips there that just clips there that's gonna keep dust and dirt out of your uh storage container and keep your miniatures looking great so uh let's get to it okay so here's the uh box kind of right out of the tin so to speak this is what it'll look like when you get it uh it's just you know got the snap lid and uh, it's uh, clear plastic um not really much to it So the first thing we want to start doing is scoring the bottom of this box edge. Uh, you can use a razor blade for this. I just use the exacto knife I use for modeling. Um, we're doing this to try to create uh, some little grooves and stuff that um, our glue can settle in. And I find if we do this with the plastic, it gives you a stronger bond. And we just go along here vertically, just doing some horizontal-ish uh, cuts. Nothing really has to be exactly measured. There's no really science to this. And then once that's done, um, we're gonna go ahead and start going the other way. And we're kind of making cube-ish, square, four-sided shapes in the bottom of our plastic. Again, you don't have to push real hard. We're not trying to cut through the plastic. We're just trying to scrape it up a little bit uh, so the glue has some cracks and stuff that it can get down there and bond. And then just a few more slashes for good measure, I guess. I really don't know what I was doing here. This is probably a bit overkill uh, amount of hashing that I've done on this box. So the next part is we just want to go ahead and sand the bottom of the box here. Just to remove any little plastic bits from cutting it. And also just provide a nice um, surface for our glue to stick to so that uh, we have a nice strong bond between the tin and the bottom of the plastic once we get that applied. Right, so once that's done, you want to just clean out the bottom of the box here real quick before we bring it back. And that's what it should look like. So then we're just going to measure the uh, inside of the box um, so we know how to cut our tin. Again, cutting the tin, um, I wasn't super precise on this. I kind of just cut a little bit over the size that I needed and then trimmed it down uh, to make sure we got a nice snug fit in the bottom of the box. So you're just gonna need a pair of tin snips to cut your tin. That's what I use right there. I think they're like 12 or $14 at Home Depot. Whoa, 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 okay. I'm gonna just stop the tutorial for just a second. I got a small disclaimer I wanna put out. Uh, this tin that I'm working with right now is actually pretty sharp. And then once you cut it, it just gets sharper. So get some gloves, don't be dumb. That's all, back to it. Once uh, your tin is cut, it should just slide right down in the box. Uh, remember though, uh, you should really be holding, wearing gloves when handling this tin, because um, it is super sharp, and if you're not careful, you could easily cut yourself. So we're just gonna use some black duct tape. Nothing too fancy here. And 
And we're gonna start applying the duct tape to the edges of the tin. This does two things. One, protects your fingers for future handling of this. Um, even though this will be glued to the bottom of the box, I think there would still be a chance that you could uh, cut yourself on this if the tin wasn't covered up. Uh, the second thing that this is doing is the duct tape has a little bit of a texture on it. And I find that this helps miniatures from sliding along the side of the base. Um, and some of my older ones I was using screens to uh, do this, like the stuff you put on screen doors just to give a little bit of a, like, gripping so the miniature's base doesn't move around on a tin. Um, it worked okay, but this duct tape just works so much better. The other reason we're going to be doing this is because the magnets we're using are quite strong. And sometimes when you go to pull a miniature, you might actually pull the miniature off the base instead of the miniature's magnet releasing from the tin. So when you do pick your miniatures out of the cases, just make sure you're grabbing from the base and not the tip of the miniature. Um, though personally, I've never really had that happen to me. I've only seen it happen. So we're just gonna apply this duct tape to all four sides here. And anything that's running over, just to get your Zacta blade and just cut that off. And like I said, I, th I think uh, this tin cost me about $20 at uh, Home Depot. Um, so really wasn't that big of a deal. And I've had enough now to make over 10 boxes. So uh, quite, quite a deal. And this is just back in the roofing supplies. Uh, my Home Depot was the very back of the store. But I'm sure that this kind of tin is probably available at any uh, hardware store, Lowe's, Aces, anything like that. So there we go, we got the frame of our uh, piece done. Now I guess you could probably leave it like this if you wanted to. But we just wanna make sure that it still fits in the box of the tape, and there you go, we see we have a nice snug, if not completely straight fit. Right, so we could probably stop with just the edge, but I like covering the entire tin in duct tape because like I said before, it gives a nice uh, grip for the miniatures to, so they don't slide around on the metal. Even though the, the magnet will stop them from falling off, but uh, we, again, this is probably overkill honestly, but I just like that extra texture um, that the duct tape applies. And if you have little creases and things like that in the duct tape, it's fine. It doesn't actually affect the miniatures ability to grip onto the plastic. Um, it just doesn't look as pretty, but personally I'm building this for my own use. I'm not looking to sell this or anything. So I um, guess craftsmanship standards just aren't as high. So this Gorilla Glue Two Part Epoxy is super strong and it's what I recommend gluing, using to glue the bottom of your base. Ha ha, it's me again. Uh, one more disclaimer. Uh, later after I was using this glue, I thought, you know, Maybe I should read the back of this, and after doing so, reading the instructions and the warnings, I would encourage you to also wear a uh, glove for these as well. Uh, again, I'm not doing it in the video, but I just wanted to stop real quick and be like, put on gloves, simple latex ones should be fine. Uh, yeah, last time you'll see me till the end, I promise. Basically, you're just gonna use this whole tube uh, for one, um, you're gonna see I struggle uh, pushing this out, and the reason is is because there's a little piece of black plastic that I forgot to punch out. Uh, so you can see there's a little bit of black plastic between the two uh, squeezers, and if you just push that out, you won't have any problem at all squeezing this. And I just go ahead and mix it in the box as well. Uh, 
And I think these things retail for right around $5 last time I checked on Amazon when I purchased them. And you can usually get them in packs of like four or five too. Right, and like I said, so this next part, I really should have been wearing gloves, but the uh, glue comes with a popsicle stick and you just go ahead and mix that together and then you wanna make sure you have a nice, clear, even color between the two glues. And it'll kind of turn this foggy, white, almost snot color uh, once it's mixed. And then once it is, we just start spreading that around the uh, bottom of the box. If you do get this on the side of the box, you can scrape it off. Um, it doesn't come off easily but uh, you can definitely remove it. Personally though, again, since this is just storage of my own miniatures, I don't really worry about that that much. For me, storage containers has always been about keeping what's inside looking nice, not so much keeping the box itself looking good. And then we're just gonna put that tin back in there, press it down nice and firm. Right, so uh, we clean up the edges and then you're gonna wanna place something heavy in the box to uh, make sure that plastic uh, bonds to the tin and then just leave that object in there overnight. Right, so while we're waiting for our tin and our box to dry, I'm gonna show you how I magnetize my miniatures. Uh, first thing you wanna use is to get the super glue accelerant. It's not necessary, but uh, it definitely makes things helpful. And then uh, I also have this uh, little handmade tool that I made, and it's just a mechanical pencil with a magnet glued in the top of it. If you set up one of these with an, like both polarities of your magnet, it will make magnetizing future models so much easier. So the first thing we do is we just take our Gorilla Glue gel glue. Uh, you've seen me use this in other videos. And then we take the magnet and we put a little bit of that accelerant just on the end. Uh, I don't spray it. I actually just pull the, the sprayer out and use the end of the tube as a dripper. And then we're just gonna push that firmly into our little dot of glue, hold it to a count of about 30 or 45 Mississippi and uh, once that's done, you have a nice firm bond. So if this system of um, miniature storage had a failure point, I would say it's when the glue separates from the base. Uh, before I was using this Gorilla Glue, I was using Zappa Gap, which is another model assembly glue. Um, however, you wanna make sure that you are using a strong super glue, uh, and I've never seen one magnet snap off with uh, the Gorilla Glue, so that's what I recommend. And there you go. So again, um, you could probably be just fine with a single magnet on especially these smaller infantry bases. Personally though, I like adding two just because it's a second contact point. Uh, before, I was just using one large magnet uh, for miniatures that didn't have slotted bases. But again, if that uh, magnet does ever pop off the bottom of the base, the last thing you want is a loose miniature bouncing around in your storage case. So that's why I prefer two magnets. That way, if you do lose one, there's still something else contacting to the metal. But these one infantry plastic uh, miniatures, if you're worried about budget, you could absolutely get by with just holding them down with one magnet. But like they say, nothing says kill like overkill.
and there you have it. So another feature of these magnets uh, is that you will have your own built-in fear system sometimes. Uh, so when models get too close, they might uh, the polarity of the magnets might make them bounce away from each other. Uh, personal game table, this hasn't been much of an issue for me. Bigger issue, and it's the sweet Congo line that we now have. <laughs> Then, uh, if you ever want to fix that, just put a little washer on the bottom, I mean, and bam. Now uh, it adds a nice weight to the miniature, and it's going to be too, too heavy now for the polarities to matter. And if you're just worried about the height, there is a miniature one with a washer, and miniature two with a washer. So you can see that these guys are nice and steady. Right, so there you have it. I think in total I've probably spent like right around $100 on this project, and I'm up to like 12 storage boxes. So um, I got the tin at Home Depot, uh, worked out great. Links for the glue and the boxes that I'm using are down in the description below. Uh, one thing you might be interested in is if you do have larger miniatures, uh, they do make these larger tubs. Uh, see, I got my beholder and little war badger thing and um, some reaper turtle monster down in there. Uh, they're great. They have the same kind of lid as the smaller one does. That one just, and it just clips right on there. And uh, you just doot doot that. And then the smaller ones can even nest right inside. So uh, really easy way to store these things and keep them all together. Um, you can, if you want to, also label the sides so you can tell people what's in them. And another thing I haven't tried yet, but it's kind of been percolating in the old brain thinker, is uh, to put a tin on the top of this lid as well. And that way, so see how these miniatures are obviously too large to fit in the smaller box, but they're not so large that maybe I couldn't put like something smaller along the top. Uh, you know, just to maximize storage. Uh, big on that, save some money. Right, so before we wrap this all up, I've got a few uh, news kind of updates I want to share with you guys. First off, uh, kind of cool is I set up a Patreon page. Now I know you're probably thinking, wow, 18 subscribers. Now is maybe not the time to get a Patreon. But uh, if you haven't heard, Patreon's done some changes to their pricing structure. And if you set one up now, you get grandfathered in. So I figured, eh, what the hell? Let's just get that, uh, let's just go ahead and fire that off. Uh, second thing, as always, I'm available on other social media. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at da.snodgrass. Uh, you can also find me on uh, Facebook.com. I'll put the links to those down in the description. And then also we've officially launched a Table Ready Gaming, which is a little online web store where we're selling some, uh, where I'm selling some t-shirts that uh, I've designed with some friends and some really cool dice towers that uh, I'm pretty excited about. So if you got some time, go check those things out. Also, uh, just gonna throw this out, uh, I found another I mean, larger than me, but still kind of small YouTube channel that uh, I've really been enjoying. It's called Goobertown Hobbies, and he makes a great uh, video on how to make a miniature case for transporting minis. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw that link down in the description as well. And if my channel gets large enough, maybe I'll even put a card up here in the video. Well, anyhow, I thank you a lot for watching. Uh, please check out some other videos on our channel. Um, and if you have any thoughts on things you'd like to see, please uh, list them in the comments. And until then, uh, take care.